wire controls may consist of a float switch, pressure switch, limit switch, or a thermostat. It may be any device switch that has a definite on and a definite off position. Devices of this type are designed to handle small loads. It is therefore necessary to use the two-wire pilot device to operate a device that can handle high currents. This is usually a magnetic motor starter. These two-wire pilot devices are acted upon mechanically. The float switch in rung 1 of the diagram shown above will close on fluid rise. When it closes, it will energize the motor starter coil M1 in rung 1. The float switch on rung 2 will close on fluid fall and energize motor starter coil M2 in rung 2. Coil M1 could be controlling a pump that empties a vessel, while coil M2 could be controlling a pump that fills a vessel. In this diagram, two separate sets of conditions will operate the motor starter coil M1. If a decrease in pressure occurs, the pressure switch on rung 1 will close, energizing the coil. Or if an increase in temperature occurs, the thermal switch in rung 2 will close, also energizing the coil. These two wire pilot devices are wired in parallel. Two wire pilot devices may also be connected in series as shown in the diagram above. If both the flow switch and the pressure switch are closed, coil M1 will energize. In a series control circuit, all two wire pilot devices must be closed to activate the circuit. In many situations, enunciating devices are needed to indicate the status of control devices. The diagram above uses two pilot lights to indicate the status of the motor starter, either energized or de-energized. The red pilot light indicates that the starter is de-energized and the motor is not running. The green pilot light indicates that the motor starter is energized and the motor is running. Horns, buzzers, and sirens, as well as indicator lamps, are used in production systems to warn personnel of potential hazards or to alert them to a malfunction. These devices may be operated by two wire controls. A typical alarm silencing circuit is shown in the diagram above. In many industrial applications, if a high pressure situation occurs, a hazard to equipment and personnel is possible. Enunciating systems are designed to warn maintenance personnel of the hazard. Due to OSHA requirements pertaining to noise pollution, a means must be available to silence the audible alarm, while allowing the visual alarm to continue until the problem is corrected. A three-wire control uses a normally open, momentarily operated start button and a normally closed, momentarily operated stop button. It also employs the use of a set of normally open auxiliary contacts. These auxiliary contacts are used to interlock the circuit or seal it in. These contacts are sometimes referred to as memory contacts. When the start button is pressed, current will flow to the coil of the motor starter. As the coil energizes and pulls the armature to close the main contacts, the auxiliary contacts will also close. This action will allow current to flow around the start button that was momentarily closed. The circuit is now sealed in. By operating the stop button, the flow of current to the coil is interrupted and the magnetic field collapses, allowing the armature to return to its at-rest position. This return to the at-rest position is accomplished by spring tension. With the armature at rest, the auxiliary contacts are opened and the seal-in is lost. The motor starter is now de-energized. Pilot lights are also used with three wire control systems when necessary. They are connected in exactly the same manner as in two wire control systems. The on indicating pilot light G1 is wired in parallel with the coil, while the off indication pilot light R1 is connected through a set of normally closed auxiliary contacts. A three-wire control will provide low voltage protection. This is the inherent property of the system to shut down if the voltage goes below a certain specific point. With the three-wire control, the system must be restarted by operating the start button. 
In cases where this occurs, pilot lights are used to give a visual indication that the system has shut down. Many applications will require a push to test pilot light. These devices will allow the operator or maintenance personnel to check if the system is really off or if a bulb is merely burned out. This version of the alarm silencing circuit takes advantage of the low voltage protection provided by the three wire control. In this application, the maintenance personnel may silence the audible alarm by pressing the off button. They may restart it by pressing the on button. If, however, they fail to reset the audible alarm, it will be automatically reset when the problem is cleared. In this case, when the temperature returns to the normal range. Push button stations will extend a conventional three wire control. The starter may be operated from any of the station controls. A simple rule of thumb will help when wiring multiple station controls. All stop buttons are in series with the auxiliary contacts, and all start buttons are in parallel with the auxiliary contacts. This rule of thumb will apply no matter how many start stop stations are added. The diagram shown here employs three stations. Note that all of the stops are in series and all of the starts are in parallel with the auxiliary contacts. Any of the start buttons will provide a current path to the coil. The normally open auxiliary contacts or seal-in contacts will seal around all of the start buttons. Any of the stop buttons will interrupt the flow of current to the coil and allow it to de-energize.